This week, from the minute he first saw her, Les knew Sarah was the woman of his dreams. And they fell madly in love. They took their time, and so by the time they tied the knot, they'd built a pretty solid partnership. But a single disagreement exposed the weaknesses in their relationship. And once it was exposed, the problem seemed to multiply. Welcome to My Crazy Divorce. I'm a failure as a husband. I'm a failure as a man. It's just, I'm beautiful and I'm bright and I deserve better. It's a great day, I'm feeling good. Oh, the possibilities of what I could. Oh, do with the world at my fingertips. My imagination brings a smile up to my lips. Welcome to My Crazy Divorce, everyone. I'm your host, Tom Milligan. Before we get started, I gotta tell you that this week's show is quite different from previous shows. First, there's no lying, cheating, deceit, or any of the things we've come to expect. And to make it even more different, Les and Sarah's divorce didn't take very long, they really didn't fight, and they didn't pay attorneys. So you may be asking yourself, that doesn't sound crazy at all, so why the hell is this guy on my crazy divorce? Great question. You'll just have to listen to find out. But first, if you have a crazy divorce story you'd like to share on our show, please visit MyCrazyDivorce.com and click on the Apply to Be a Guest button. I'd really love to hear from you. And if you're considering divorce and think you and your spouse can both be reasonable, be sure to give OurDivorce.com a try. Their simple three-step process guides you through the entire divorce. And the best part is, you only pay if it works for your situation. There's literally no risk. And finally, before we get to the interview, always remember, I'm not an attorney or a therapist, so nothing said on this show should be considered legal or therapeutic advice. All good? Okay. Let's meet Les. Les, welcome to My Crazy Divorce. I want to thank you for being here, and I'm really excited to hear your story. I'm excited to tell you. Well, fantastic. So you ready to go? Absolutely. Absolutely. Fantastic. All right. Let's get started with some simple stuff. Okay. Why don't you tell us about your early life? Like, where did you grow up? Um, I grew up in a city called Rockford, Illinois, just outside of Chicago. Uh, born and raised. Lived there, I'd say, 90% of my life, uh, except for my stint in the military. Well, okay. That I'm going to ask you about your military life in a minute. I didn't know about that. Oh, okay. So before we get to that, though, let's let's stay with that early life for okay. a bit. Um, your home life, were your parents, did they, were they a happy marriage? Did they stay married? My parents stayed married for uh, 34 years until my father passed away. Um, my dad was a, uh, a nothing short of a personal hero to me. I loved and respected my dad my whole life. And, uh, he was, he was great. I loved him. Um, they, they had, a, a decent marriage. Um, sadly, I, I did not get along with my mother and never have. Um, I think that kind of played into what may have gone. It may have had a hand in what happened later on in life. Cause I just, I had no respect for my mother. And there's a, there's a, many reasons why she was not a, not a nice, not a, not a good person. How they oh. stayed married. I don't know. I mean, but they are, I mean, they stayed married. How is beyond me, but uh, <clears throat> my dad was a, uh, I was a machinist CNC programmer, a very hardworking, I mean, blue collar guy, amazing work ethic. My mother, the complete opposite, complained about working, want, whined every night about having to go to work, you know, so mm -hmm. it was just like polar opposites. And, and uh, sadly, my dad worked second or third shift. So I was, you know, forced to listen to my, to my mother for most of my childhood. You know, she was the one who took care of us in the evenings and whatnot. So got a little bit, uh, a little bit sandy with the with, with mom over the years. <laughs> <laughs> sandy, I've never heard that term. That's great though. Well, um, maybe your dad worked second or third shift so that he didn't have to spend that much time with her. I you don't. I, I thought that very same thing. I was like, that makes perfect sense that the man would go on third shift. I, I'd have to get the hell out of there. <laughs> <At least. Huh. laughs> when I was eleven, if I could have drove, I would have gotten out of there too. <laughs> so is your mom still alive? Uh, yes, I haven't spoken to my mother in years, though. I, uh, we were okay. estranged for okay. eight years. 
Well, I'm sorry to hear that, but it sounds like it was a lifetime coming. Oh, it was the minute my father died, it the wheels started rolling on that one. I I, I only really uh, paid much attention to her because out of respect for my dad, he mm-hmm. was still married to her, and for whatever reason, he was with her. So I I did it for him. But when he died, that all that any empathy was out the window at that point. So I have to ask. I mean, you're. 10 years old and you didn't get along with your mother. Yeah. Yeah. Um, what, why? What, I mean, it, was there an incident? Yes. Was there just an attitude? Mm-hmm. What happened? Well, it is, it was an overall attitude that extended throughout my life. My mother was a, a pill popper for one thing. Um, okay. always never wanted to better herself in any way. Always wanted to drag everybody down with her. You know, I, my, my brother and I referred to her as Debbie Downer because <laughs> That's she just it doesn't matter when you called that woman and said, hey, how you doing? It was never. Hey, I'm doing great. It was always well. And then here goes your list of ailments and whatever. And but. um, I, I don't know if you're going to if you can keep this if you want, but this is probably out of left field. But she. Um, she molested me. When I was oh. six years old. Oh. I'm sorry to hear that, Les. So that, I mean, that is what, of course, kicked it all off. And being a child, you're, you're a child of the 70s. It never even occurred to me to tell my father because my dad, even though he was a great man, was of that mentality, you know, uh, children to be seen, not heard until, you know, until I became an adult. I don't think yep. he would have believed me. Really? Yeah. Mm-hmm. And she would, of course, have denied it. Wow. I'm... Again, that's just no child should ever have to deal with it. Well, no, no person Nobody. should ever have to deal with that. Absolutely. So Especially I'm, from your own, from your own parent for crying out loud. You know, it's, it's ridiculous. You're like the third person I've ever told that to. I, you know, that, that's something I kept really close to the vest for a very long time. Nobody knew. Well, well, I'm, I appreciate you telling me yeah. that's, I, I think that's an important precursor to a lot of things that I, I mean, this is, I'm not, a, I'm not a doctor. And, but I just have a feeling that that had to somehow play into how I functioned with women later on in life. How could it not? Exactly. I mean, it it had to. Yeah. And when you, when you have no respect for somebody and you, and they act like that towards you, when they start barking orders at you, it's immediate resentment. And I think later on down the road that came into play. Uh, You mentioned you have a brother. I do. Is that your only sibling? Uh, well, I have uh, I have two half sisters and a half brother. My dad's first marriage. Okay, so there's five of us all together. But it was my brother, just my younger brother, and our and myself growing up in our in our house. So your 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 half siblings, mm-hmm. uh, uh, they lived with their mother. Yes, yes. Okay, we were close though. But we were close my whole life. They, Okay. And you're still close to that? Oh, them? absolutely. Well, I mean, not, not geographically, but yes, right. we, we talk, okay. you know, we're, we're always in contact. That's great. Yeah. I love that. Yeah. Needed it. My, uh, <laughs> yeah. I'll tell you my, uh, I, I had three children from my first marriage and my second wife had one son from her first marriage. And, you know, we were married for almost 18 years. And so her son, uh, I, I was his dad. Yeah, not that his father was not in the picture. His his father's a great man. Um, and he's a good guy. But, uh, you know, they, he, you know, my stepson lived with us. So I was, you know, I was there most of the time. And so, um, yeah. yeah. And so when I, when I got divorced a few years ago, my, he, my stepson, um, and my two oldest kids, we all moved in together. So the four of us shared an apartment for a year and a half. Wow. Uh, we had a great time. That's great. And, That's great. Yeah. And he and I still talk all the time. I, you know, I don't know what kind of relationship he has with his mother. I mean, she and I don't talk much, sure. or I, I should say at all. <laughs> and <laughs> so, but it's it's great to, to have that relationship. I mean, just because a, you know, a divorce happens or whatever, I'm glad that yeah, you, you, you have yeah. that. People don't necessarily need, I don't, I don't, I've never understood that need to, t- to take sides when a divorce yeah. happens, it, especially if you're very close to someone never made any sense to me. Yeah. 
let's talk about, let's move a little bit later on in life and get into uh, your social life, like in high school. Were you like the the jock? Were you the geek? Were you the, you know, did you date a lot? I had two very distinct phases in high school, in school. It was quite strange. Um, all the way through uh, grade school and into middle school, you know, rail thin kid and whatnot. When I got into high school, for some reason, I just started I mean, I played football. I played football from the age of nine on and exercised all the time. But for some reason, I just started getting fat. And I was just a really weird looking dude by the time my freshman and sophomore year in high school. I was just an odd looking dude, you know, <laughs> hair shape and just completely out of out of character. And and I got you know, I got a lot. I got shit thrown at me and teased for like any kid does, you know, who, who looks weird. And then. Mm -hmm. What junior? Never a girlfriend, <laughs> you know, nothing like that. Freshman, uh, sophomore year, that wasn't that was a no fly zone at that point. <laughs> and uh, my junior year, for whatever reason, I guess my body just caught up. I shot up four inches and dropped sixty five pounds between sophomore and junior year. And you know, I went from five nine two ten to six one buck seventy five in wow. in the in the course of about i don't know 6 months 7 months something it was nuts and i mean they had me at the doctor i thought i was dying you know? <laughs> <laughs> and he's like nah, i just you know adult body coming in so then it completely flipped then i was uh, i was I, I had really long hair i was a metalhead you know metallic slayer i was a music's been my thing i played drums since i've been 6 and uh i was the long haired leather jacket metalhead but then I, had nice. then I had girlfriends, you know, and then, then shit was cool after that. Yeah. <laughs> I getting, love high it. school started getting pretty damn cool after, you know, a, a junior year. <laughs> yeah. Wow. That's, um, yeah, that is quite a transformation. It is. <laughs> Good for you. <laughs> so did you play football throughout both of those phases? I played football, uh, Unfortunately, when the second phase hit, I was no longer feasible anymore. I played a uh, left tackle on the offensive line, and there's no such thing as a buck seventy five offensive tackle. You know? Right. So yeah. out I went, and that was that. <laughs> All right. So Les, let's let's switch gears and and let's start talking about your ex. All right. Um, I want to understand you know where she came from, but first, what are we going to call her? Sarah. Sarah. Yeah. That's my little sister's name. Oh wow. Um, yeah, so any likeness or any uh, similarities between Les's ex and my sister is purely coincidental. That's right. Okay. <laughs> okay. So where was where did Sarah grow up? Sarah grew up uh, in, a, in a small town about 10 miles away from Rockford and uh, called Poplar Grove, Illinois. And um, she, did not have a, uh, she did not have a, a good childhood either. She didn't go through what I went through, but she had parents that simply didn't care about her. I mean, mm -hmm. she was sent home from school for being dirty, you know, and uncleaned. And her mother would just lay in bed. She, her, she, they just didn't care. So she had a, a pretty traumatic childhood herself. No abuse. She never told me about any kind of abuse or anything. But I mean, that is abuse when it goes on for years. Yeah. Um, so she had a pretty bad go of it until she left home. And she left home. She was like me. We left, we left skid marks on the floor getting out of, out of our house. You know, <laughs> you graduated high school and you're out. I uh, graduated high school and five months later I was in basic training. Yeah. Tell you which branch of the military, the army. I was in the air force, air force. Yep. And what, what did you do in the air force? I did what they call, what they called environmental support. But what I do is a, I operate and maintain water treatment plant and a wastewater treatment plant. And all the chemical processes and the laboratory work and all the maintenance and pumps and all that go along with it. So I derive a great amount. I didn't, when I first got that job, I was like, yike, this is going to be a nightmare. But it's like one of the most fulfilling jobs. I still, matter of fact, I do it to this day. I still do it. And uh, not in the military, though. Actually, I do work on a military installation. Yes. <laughs> oh, really? Yeah. But you're not in the no, military. No, no, no. I'm, a, contractor I'm a D, uh, Department of Defense. Uh, employee. Okay. Yeah. But, uh, I, uh, so yeah, I, I loved it. I, um, amazing amount of satisfaction comes with that job, making, you know, making the dirty clean. And I did, I did, that's what I did throughout the, I mean, I deployed for, uh, the Gulf war and I went over to the middle East in support of all that wonderfulness that went on over there. 
And uh, <laughs> I was in uh, Cobar Towers before they were bombed. Yeah, I mean, I, I think I left in a year later. The building next to me was one that bom- that was bombed. Wow. All those guys were killed. So I did four years. Basically, I did. I, I went in because I, uh, I, one thing I was, there was no going to college unless I was going to take out a loan because, you know, we just weren't a family of means. So, uh, and I didn't really want to go. I didn't know what I wanted to do except play drums in a metal band. That's what I wanted right. to do. But my dad's like, yeah, you can, you can pay exactly zero bills with that, you know, with that pipe dream. So I ended up going in the military. So Sarah, she didn't have a great home life. No. Um, parents ignored her. If, if it's not abuse, it was borderline abuse, but did her parents, um, did her parents get along? Did they, well, other than that shitty part of her home life, what was how how what kind of a relationship did her parents have? I guess um, I can only really give you an honest assessment of the time that I saw them together. You know, when I right. began dating her. So mm-hmm. at that at, at the time that I began dating Sarah, um, they were in full uh, rebound. Let's make this right mode. They were almost overcompensating because they had come to the conclusion that they had done wrong by her and they were trying desperately to uh, make up for it. That's the way I saw it. And that's the way Sarah explained it too. Oh, so they were trying to make amends. They were very, basically, yes, very hard. Correct their mistakes. They knew what they had done and they, uh, they were, they were back, they were backpedaling pretty hard, but got it. They were, uh, stayed married to this day. Still, still married. Um, they were very nice to be very nice people to me. I mean, when I met them, nice, very nice people. Uh, treated me like I was a son. I mean, they were, they were good and everything, at least from the time I met her, they were all solid. It seemed, you know, everything was fine with them, but she had told me about that past and they went at each other like feral cats all the time. They were always <laughs> at each other's throat and it was mostly her mother screaming at their, at her father. Most of the time. Okay. So does Sarah have siblings? Yes. And uh, again, Same situation. She has a a younger brother and an older sister. Her older sister basically was left to be her caregiver. And when she was younger, her older sister did not like doing that. And so her older sister took it out on her, on Sarah as well. So not not only had it coming from her parents, but then she's getting her, her ass handed to her literally, you know, getting slapped around by her big sister. Oh, golly, that sucks. Yeah. So, I almost hate to ask uh, about her social life. Did she kind of outgrow all that and blossom in high school or what? Um, I don't, she's six years younger than me for one. So, you know, I was in the military when she was in high school, you know, we didn't meet until I was 30 and she was 24. Um, She had videotapes of her. She seemed like, you know, as well as she could be adjusted person for given the circumstances she was you know brought up in. And she's very, very social, very uh, Mm -hmm. outspoken girl, holds nothing back. And that's what kind of, that's what really attracted me to her. I was like, this girl, this chick will say anything. And I was like, yeah, I'm I'm, I'm down with that. And uh, yeah, so as far as she, she seemed like, but she left home at, at 17. I don't know if you want to go right into this, but she, she left home at 17. You know, she hit the ground running when she went into the military as well. Oh, okay. Yeah, but she was married by 18, two kids by 20. How, did religion play a role in your family growing up? Um, early on it did. My mother uh, was, uh, she went to church. I, they, I think they sent me to Sunday school just to get me out of the house, me and my brother, that kind of thing, you know, have some time for themselves. My mother went to church. My dad, uh, very, I mean, not a, not a screaming guy, but he did not, he did not subscribe to man-made organized religion. He thought it was, he thought they were charlatans and he, you know, made it known. He never, you know, barked it out, but if, if asked, (laughs) he'd let you know. Um, so I kind of got both ends of the spectrum and I tended later on in life. I kind of, I'm, I'm what you call, I know it's a cliche statement, spiritual, but I just, I don't really subscribe either to what mankind has come up with as religion. So got it. So it wasn't religion itself was not a big influence. No, it wasn't. It it, it mattered neither way. I mean, if, yeah. if I wanted to go, I could. If I didn't, they didn't mind. 
And what about Sarah? Sarah, no, Sarah is an atheist. Okay. Yeah. And okay. She'll let you know. Let's fast forward then. So you're 30, she's 24, mm-hmm. uh, and you guys meet. Let's let's talk about how how did you meet? Okay. Let's, let's hear about that. All right. Well, I worked for a uh, I was a uh, delivery driver for a <clears throat> excuse me for an electronic distribution warehouse, and I used to go to this place where Sarah worked and, you know, instantly I was like, okay, yeah, I know what I need to do here. You know, you, you see somebody in the office, like I'm going, I got to get to work. And, uh, I worked on her for a long time. I mean, uh, for a year. Um, and then, uh, cause you know, I'd find a reason to have her sign the paperwork or something. And, uh, yeah. it was, it was, nice. it was mutual. Oh yeah. I was, I, I, I dropped my wallet one time in the, in the, uh, shipping and receiving area. So I had, so I could go back to get my wallet, that kind of stuff. Oh, yeah. you're a sly dog. Smooth, right. And uh, <laughs> when I finally did ask her, I just kind of one day I, I went and I was like, you and I need to go out. And she's like, nah, I have a boyfriend. I'm like, Oh, you got one of those? She's like, yeah. And she goes, yeah, I can't, I can't do that. She goes, you know, I have kids. Right. And she had that S on the end of it. I was like, kids. Oh shit. Yeah. I'm like, all right. All right. For later, <laughs> for later, uh, later reference that, was a red flag that I should have picked up on. I mean, me personally, not that there's anything wrong with dating women with kids. I have no problem with it, but for my particular uh, circumstance, that ended up being an issue. But, uh, but then one day she walked up to me when I was delivering and she handed me a slip of paper and I opened it and it says, if you're still interested and I get and it had her phone number on it. And of course I went home and broke up with the girl I was dating immediately. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I called her. I was like, I, I can't do this anymore. Click and uh, called her up and we were off and running almost immediately. And, and wait a minute. How much time had passed since you had hit on her, like openly hit on her and the time that she gave you that note? About four months. Okay. So she, she had, during that time, either she had thought, oh, here's this hot less guy showing up <laughs> every day or something went awry in her relationship or both. I'm going with the hot less guy, but you know, <laughs> yeah. Hey, Hey, look, man. So, so you had never been married, but she had been married. She had a couple of kids. Mm-hmm. She had a very um, awful, I mean, it, it just continued her, her bad luck just kept going into that marriage. It was awful. From what she did. And so, so wait a minute. So she was married at 18, two kids by 20. When did she get divorced? 20. I, she got divorced. She was so she got married when she was eighteen. So she, I, I met her a year and a half after her divorce. And in that time, that year and a half, she'd been divorced and was seriously dating some other guy. That's right. She was in a uh, eleven month relationship with another man before she met me. So honestly, she's never been alone. That's a red flag. Exactly. And. And I'm going to say that because I lived that because right after I got divorced, uh, I just a few months after I got divorced, I met this woman. She's, you know, beautiful, independent, didn't have young kids. You know, she met, she checked all of the, all of the boxes and we got along famously. And I just thought, my gosh, I've found my forever person. Exactly. We had an 11 month relationship. <laughs> we better go back and uh, see where you were living. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, uh, I mean, this was just a couple of years ago. So, okay. All right. <laughs> uh, yeah. So, yeah, we had an 11 month relationship and it ended, uh, not in a very good way. And I still don't know why it ended. Uh, the, the interesting thing. Wow. Just, she just one night said, we're done. And in she, she basically said, get the fuck out of my house. And I, I literally d- don't know what happened to this day. Wow. Never got uh, any closure which is a, on that, huh? No. Isn't that weird? It's, but wow. I, I look at, I have to look back now and just say, you know, whatever it is that she thinks I did or that I did do. I mean, maybe I did something. I don't know. But either way, that's clearly not the mature way to handle it. No. And so I have to look at it and say, I dodged a bullet. Yes, you did. I was going to say, this is probably for the best. That that yeah. No, it took a while to get there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it doesn't have, well, now Sarah broke, Sarah broke up with me, uh, about 
four months after we were dating. And I'm, I'm just going to be full disclosure. I fell in love with her immediately. I knew I was, I was like, I was like you, I found her. This is the one. Mm -hmm. And I was all in. And yep. I think that kind of spooked her a little because she did. This, I mean, she was very nice about it, but she just told me one day, she goes, I don't think this is going to work. She goes, I, I just, oh. and I was like, it's only been four months. So I wasn't like full blown sitting on the floor, bawling, heartbroken, but I was amazingly disappointed. I'm like, wow, really? But then, you know, she would always call me back, you know, red flag, you know, she would yeah. call me back and say, I want to get back together. And that happened. I think that happened twice. Really? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Looking back, red flags, exactly. hindsight's always twenty twenty, exactly. right? Well, I was, I, I, my brother at one point asked me about it and I told him, I was like, when you are in love with somebody and you, and you see these red flags, but you cannot make, I was like, make yourself leave somebody that you're in love with. It's like shooting yourself in the leg with a gun. Your body won't let you do it. Interesting. Man, that was my take on it. I was like, I could see what was going on. And those, believe me, the, the, the breaking up and whatnot and her timeline kind of freaked me out a little bit, but I was, I was just too in and there, you were whipped. I was, I was done and I, I could see it, but I wasn't going to let that shit soak in. That, you know, most of us, I think most people either ignore the red flags or don't see the red flags. You, you didn't ignore them. You saw them and said, yeah, I'm just going to sweep those under the rug. Exactly. They don't exist. I must be seeing this the wrong way. I'm in love with her. She can't be bad for me. Wow. That, you know what? <laughs> that's a great statement, right? <laughs> of course. I'm in love with her. She can't be bad. That's how I, that's, that was my mindset, man. I was, that's, that's where I was at. Wow. Yeah. How many of us have done that? Everybody that's been divorced, I'll bet. <laughs> <laughs> How can this possibly go wrong? <laughs> you know? Right. Love will conquer all. That's right. And at the beginning of it, I mean, Jesus, you talk about, we would, I mean, I, I feel bad about it now, but we would actually make, not make fun of, but we would clown people. We're like, this marriage thing is not hard. It's not hard at all. Everybody's talking about how hard marriage is and all this shit. And I'm like, we got this figured out. And she's like, I know, this is bullshit. These people are crazy. And we we would sit around and talk like that. Yeah. Like we had our shit together and we no one was going to tell us any differently. I I was there as well, my friend. Really? You, you <laughs> oh, yeah. same thing, huh? Absolutely. I'm not the only one then. <laughs> oh yeah. Do you remember, give or take, month and year of when you married when you first went out? It'd have to be this sometime in the summer of 2002. Okay. Yeah. And summer of 2002. Yeah. And that first date, I mean, for me and her too, I mean, she told me later on that, I mean, it was instant. It was like, you know, there was no doubt for me. Yeah. And, you know, not include. And so, and then I don't want to get to the engagement yet, but how long did you date until you got engaged? Um, what, four, uh, three, almost four years. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Okay. I was a little, um, I mean, we can get into it later if it, when you ask another question, but I was a little <clears throat> apprehensive about, um, marriage, it, legal marriage. And I was like, okay. I, I, I told her many times that I was like, I don't want to have to be with you. I want to want to be with you. And I said, and I, you know, and sometimes marriage and that piece of paper, is a prison sentence, you know? And I was like, I don't want to see you that way. So I was a little um, on the fence about actual marriage. So it wasn't that you didn't want to be with her. It was, and it wasn't that you weren't sure about the relationship. You just didn't want yes. the government involved. Exactly. I was like, what does a piece of paper from the state mean? What about how I love you? I mean, that's yeah, just, I, yeah, that's how I thought. I agree with you. Yeah. I agree with you to this day. Yeah. Um, so during that, four years, basically. Did you, did you live together? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. We did. How long did you date before you, you met her kids? Actually, um, I met them pretty quickly. Um, again, looking back, knowing what I know now, that's not healthy either to, uh, introduce somebody new to children immediately, but I love, I love kids. I always have. And I had a blast. They were just baby. They were five and three when I met them. So they were babies, you know? And we had a blast, you know, we went to, uh, I met them, we went to, uh, I think it was a state fair or something like that. And we had a riot. We had a, we had a great time. And 
I th- I don't know. I can't attest to what Sarah was thinking, but she, I think she was just testing me. How was I going to inter- interact with the, with the girl? Of course. That kind of thing. Which is a smart thing to do. Very, I think for oh, mother. she's not, just, she's, I can never say that she doesn't think some things through. You know, so, yeah. Yeah. And so how long did you date before you actually moved in together? I think we moved in what, uh, about two and a half years in I sold, I mean, this was not, I mean, I had my own, we both had our own homes. I sold, I mean, a single guy with a four bedroom house and I sold my house and moved in with her. Interesting. Okay. Yeah. So, so you, you really did take your time, even though you were smitten from day one. Yeah. Yeah. Two and a half years yeah. is, is a long time before you moved in together and then another year and a half after that before you got married yeah absolutely wow yeah okay and, uh, that's that's yeah that's a lot actually good for you but yeah i, I mean that, i mean that was done with with purpose actually you know that wasn't a mistake by any means you know i was old enough we were both she had been through it and i was old enough to know better i thought and uh, yeah i was like i'm not rushing this there's no need but you met when you were 30. So by the time you got married, you were 34 years old. Yes. And she's now 28. Yes. Was it a big wedding or was it just kind of a. Um, no, actually we went to Vegas. Um, we were, did the whole Vegas thing. It was like a destination wedding. I mean, we still had a wedding, but it wasn't huge, but we went to, went to one of those cheesy, uh, Vegas <laughs> a wedding I, chapel. Oh, I loved it too. I thought I was like, this is it. This is us, man. You know, I, this is great. By the time you got married, you'd been living together for a year and a half. Mm-hmm. So marriage was just a, a checkbox on the, it's, it wasn't, it didn't change anything. Um, no, no, it, um, okay. it didn't. No. Why did you get married? Basically, I'm not going to, I will not say that she made me get married, but it was made very clear to me that there had to be, what are we doing? You know, if, what are we doing with all this? If we're dating and we're going to be together, where's this heading? And I, I got that. So, so, so basically your, um, lack of need to have any sort of a piece of paper or certificate from the state was counteracted for some reason. She felt that that was important and it wasn't about religion. No, clearly religion played no role in our wedding whatsoever. Get in, bitch. We are going to take back our power. You heard me right. I mean, why get mad when you can get absolutely everything? If you want to learn to become a master manifester, attract anything and anyone, you have met the perfect guide. My name is Cece, and I am a life and spiritual coach guiding others to heal themselves. On my podcast, That Bitch is Positive, we talk about everything from the quantum physics behind manifesting to how to deal with that X. Sometimes we will laugh. Sometimes we will cry, but we will always leave feeling empowered. If you're ready to dust off that crown and take back that throne, join us every Thursday and listen in to That Bitch is Positive. Your future self will thank you. Well, so you got married. Everything just kind of moves along. Uh, you were at that point, you, I am assuming you weren't delivering for the electric warehouse anymore. No, we had a very, uh, tumultuous first year of marriage. A lot of things changed. I mean, especially, I mean, I had a hard time with it too. I, I, I'm freely admit that that first year of marriage was very tough for me because of, we, you want me to go into all of it, all the changes? Well, I don't know. I, I, whatever you think is relevant, but I'm trying to understand what what, you see. The look on my face is if you'd been living together for a year and a half and you had this marriage that was nothing more than just a little checkbox, it shouldn't have really changed anything. It didn't. It was the events that happened after our marriage. Okay. So this happened. So the first year of marriage is, it's just coincidental that things started going poorly. It's not because you got married. And not necessarily. I mean, it, it, it wasn't because we got married. It's just everything. My whole life changed. All right, what happened? All right. First, I went from a single man, you know, in his own house to, you know, a married man with two stepchildren and living in her house. And then I get a, a job offer eight hours away. And then she gets pregnant. 
So we're moving states. We're going to have a baby. I'm changing jobs. She's quitting her job. And we're moving to a completely strange place where we have no friends and no family. Yeah, Except that's stressful. Other. That is, and it really, it got to me more. I mean, she was all like, she was more of the, uh, you know, we got each other. We got this. And I was with her, but it, it I mean, I will admit that that first year was, it messed me up. It was just so much change in, in such a small amount of time. Let me ask you about that though, because you're moving from uh, what, Rockford area? Yeah. Uh, to Kansas, Kansas City. City. Yeah. Um, what about the your stepdaughter's dad? Um, he, like I said, she had a horrible marriage with him. He was not a not a nice man, not a nice man. And literally, the twenty years of our marriage, I never met him, not once. I mean, I was in the room with him, never talked to him, never shook his hand, never said a word to the guy in twenty years. That's how often he was around. He was like, I, I think if I counted. It really thought about it. He saw them six, maybe seven times in that 20 year span physically faced. Wow. Them. So he was a non-existent guy and he was a bad, he was a bad guy. He was not a, not a nice man. So your stepdaughters really didn't have a father. You, you were dad. I was their father. Okay. All right. I was expected to be okay. their father too. That, that's uh, sad, but glad you were there for him. Yeah. And I had really, honestly, in the beginning, I mean, I had no problem with it. It was weird after we got married, how I went from, ooh, two kids, shit, I don't know. But I went right into it. And it, at first, when they were young, especially when they were young, because that's like, you know, kids are fun. And I had a blast with it, you know. It was, you know, when they got older, that things started to get a little rocky. Right. And I think if I recall correctly, you said that when you first started dating, they were five and three. So by the time you moved in together, they were seven, seven or eight right. and five or six. Right. Yeah. Okay. Right in there. Yeah. Those are fun ages. Yeah, yeah. exactly. We, and we had a blast, you know, it was just playing with kids. It's like being, being a kid yourself again, kind of. Yeah. So you moved to Kansas city. Uh, I, clearly you didn't move there for minimum wage job. Ooh, no. You moved there because it was a great career. It was a great opportunity. And so was there, uh, when you guys, I mean, you, I'm, I'm assuming you're not wealthy. Tell me if maybe you are. No, I am. I, I'll be a better friend to you if you are. <laughs> Wealthy, no. I do not have disposable <laughs> income. Let's just put it that way. Okay. But, yeah. but you you created a comfortable life for your family. Very much so. Very much. I was okay. able to get. And where we lived in Illinois, she did not want. I had a much bigger home. She did not want to move into my house because of the school district. It was a whole thing. So we moved into a less than savory neighborhood. And uh, I wasn't really happy about that. But, you know, we made the house great and all that. So I was able to get us out of that. And that made, I was all in. I was like, let's go. We, we got a chance to split town and do something nice, you know, do something great. So that first year of marriage was tough, mainly because of outside circumstances. You made it through, you powered through it together. What made it a good marriage? I'll have to say our attitudes toward each other at, in the beginning, like we had that us against the world, for lack of a better phrase. And we were, uh, we were both just very in love with one another. I mean, that's, I mean, it's really that simple and there was no doubt about it. I could feel it and it oozed out of my, out of my eyes. I was, I, it, I mean, the whole entire time I was married, I, I didn't see anybody else. I didn't talk to another woman in, in any kind of flirtatious matter the entire time. I just, I only looked at her. So our marriage was good. And then when she had my son, I was terrified about being a, a father, father. I didn't, I was like, what if I'm bad at it? You know, that kind of thing fell in love with him immediately. And I sure. took to it like a fish to water. And she, and she, you know, any woman, she adored that she, that I was a good father. And I was, I still am, you know, I wear yeah. like a badge. Good for you. Yeah. Good for you. I, by the way, did you ever talk about adopting your stepdaughters? Um, I would. I would. We never talked about it, but that wouldn't have happened. I knew. I knew the legal. Uh, the legal. Um, I, like I said, we never had this conversation, but I had it in my head, and I was like, if I knew that if I adopted those girls legally, that Sarah could do whatever. She could just come home one day and say, "I like the neighbor. You got to split," and I would be left paying for kids that weren't mine. I know that that, I mean, not saying that would happen, but it's a possibility. So mm -hmm. that was never even uh, a subject. Okay. Okay. So, um, 
by the way, my 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 second wife and I, the one I got divorced from just a couple few years ago, uh, Trinity is what we call her. And, Trinity. Uh, not her real name, but that's what we call it. Sure. Um, you know, w- when we first married, it was the same kind of thing. We used to say that, you know, it's us against the world. Yeah. We circled the wagons and... And in a, in a lot of ways, it really was. You guys had to circle the wagons because you guys moved to a new town and had nobody else. Right. Out of necessity, we had to circle the. Yeah, we had to circle the wagons because well, basically everybody around said you guys are making a huge mistake. Uh, now, obviously, eighteen years into the marriage, I realized yes, I did make a mistake. But the first fifteen years, it was a dream. Yeah, we had a great marriage. Yep. I have the so, same thing. First 13, 14 yeah. years were fantastic. Well, so let's, let's talk about that. Um, so 13, 14 years, mm-hmm. it was less and Sarah against the world. You guys fighting off the demons and you guys were winning. Absolutely. What happened? As much as her and I bragged about having this fantastic marriage and how nothing was ever going to come in between us. You know, we had it better than other people. We knew better. In hindsight, I tell people now, it only takes one big incident that in which you cannot resolve with one another. In other words, if 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 it's like on a moral or some kind of um, deep-seated view that you have, if you cannot reconcile over one incident, it can destroy you because it's the begin it's with the first chink in the armor. And that, yeah. that's what happened to us is that we had her daughter, the oldest had two free years of college and she threw it away so she could get married at 18. And I, and I, I, I said, do you not, have you not paid attention to what your mother went through? If you, yeah. you were part of it, kid. You know, you saw firsthand what that does. And this guy was in the air force and this guy was lonely. And I, and I tried to tell her, I was like, look, <laughs> there's, this is not love. Didn't listen. Didn't want to hear it. And her mother agreed with me, but she would not, she wouldn't say it. She would not say that I'm right. Like, he's right. You know, you're doing, you're not making, you're making a mistake. She didn't want to, she, her excuse was that I don't want to put any kind of barrier between me and my daughter to where she doesn't want to see me anymore. I was like, I get that. I understand. I said, you don't want to burn a bridge. I said, but you do understand you of all people know the monumental mistake she's making right now. And you know what? And it was almost as if her daughter and her soon to be husband were standing in the next room and writing down everything I said. And then they went on to do it in chronological order. They really screwed up by the numbers. I mean, we would get in the minute he got her away from this place. It was, it was full on torture. I mean, we, we get calls of her screaming as she's trapped in a closet. And I knew it was going to happen. I, I, I told her, I said, this guy is a bad, bad guy and bad things are going to happen. And they, and they did. So dad could see the future. I, I, you know, and I don't, I didn't want to, and I hate it. I never said I told you so. I said, but look, I'm, I'm not stupid. And you, you're not stupid because you lived it. But I know these Air Force guys. I said, I, I can tell you what's going to happen. And, and I swear they went down the line. I did. I did predicted the future for the most part. Wow. Yeah. Everything I said would happen, happened. Okay. So, so you've, you've said, okay, these 10 things are going to happen. They're happening. Uh-huh. Your Sarah is not. She agrees with you that it's a mistake, but she's not willing to back you. Not at all. Now, I mean, let's face reality here. You've got an 18. How old was she? 18? 18. Your your eighteen year old stepdaughter, she's not going to listen whether the two of you were unified or not. Yeah, you know. So yeah, you're right. I mean, was Sarah was she just trying to uh, say? Was that her motivation? Was she just saying, "Look, she's not going to believe us anyway, so I want to preserve the relationship"? I believe that was her point. Yes, and I guess, and it's from the outside looking in because I I know this sounds horrible, but I don't mean it to sound horrible. They were my stepdaughters. And I did love them. I did love them as my own kids. I really did. But there was, I just, if I'm being honest, like the connection I have with my own son and the connection I have with them is very different. So it was almost like being able to be on the outside looking in and I could remove emotion from the whole thing. Whereas Hmm. Sarah could not, she could not detach emotion from 
that situation. And she was terrified that if she made like what I said and she backed me, she was afraid that she would lose her daughter. I guess I can understand why she thought that, but it didn't take away from the fact that I was right. Right. And so was that that big event? Yep. That-, that was when it all, that was when it started to fall apart right there because we disagreed with each other so vehemently. And it was like a core values thing. And I couldn't understand how she couldn't see it. And she couldn't understand why I wouldn't just go along with it for the sake of the kid. I mean, I guess we both made valid points in our own head, but um, that was when it began. That, that started it and snowballed. Divorce doesn't have to be complicated. Our Divorce.com's three-step procedure provides a simple and affordable process that you can follow at your own pace. Save thousands by visiting OurDivorce.com today. I always hesitate to ask my guests questions that are going to be offensive, but I'm going to ask this one. Lay it on me. That almost sounds like you were just angry that she didn't agree with you. You can say that. That sounds like a very controlling, you don't seem like a controlling guy, but that's a very controlling story. Okay. Well, um, I I guess the way I told it, it does seem that way. Know this. I controlled nothing. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> I mean that in, in, in the most literal sense that I can mean it. I did not control that woman. I couldn't, even if I wanted to, there was no way. I, she's a very, very outspoken, clear-minded, intelligent woman that was, and she was not going to be. After what she went through with her first marriage, she wasn't going to be told what to do. And she made me, and she made that known. She's like, I'm going to do, that was actually another kind of what a, a problem is that she wouldn't be told that she was wrong about anything, Hmm. nothing. Okay. And no, I can, I was not, I'm not a controlling person whatsoever. So yeah, that, that wasn't, I'm sorry if it came off that way, but uh, I was, you're right. I was, I was very angry that what she wouldn't see it the way I saw it. And she was vice. She was just as angry with me for not seeing it the way she saw it. She's like, she said, preserve the family. I said, yeah, but this family's going to be in like, someone's going to, throw a grenade in the middle of this family. If this, if this keeps up like this, do you want to get calls from her screaming in a closet for the next 20 years? You know? Yeah. So, uh, not that this is part of the story, but how long did that marriage last? Oh, that's, that's the fun part. It gets better. Oh, okay. (laughs) Yeah. So we get another screaming phone call. And of course he's doing the typical guy thing. I'm going to get the best lawyer I can find. I'm going to take, and they'd had a kid by this time. And, uh, and he's like, I'm going to take that baby. And you're never going to, you know, the, the typical dumbass man thing. And I, and we told her, I was like, he ain't going to do a damn thing to you. He can't. And anyway, Sarah tells me, would you go get her? She was in Sacramento. And she's like, could you go get her please? I was like, you mean get her and what? She's like, I can bring her home. And I, this is one of the things I said when I, I got to a, when we got to a fight, I said, you know what's going to happen? They're going to get married and you know what's going to happen? She's going to come back here with a baby and no job. And I was like, son of a bitch, here we go again. <laughs> and I had to go get her. So I was the one like fulfilling my own prophecy, you know? Yeah. And so I, I did, I ran out and I, cause she couldn't, she just physically couldn't leave without help. So I went out and I got her and brought her home. Well, there you go. Yeah. And how long, how long had that been then? A couple of years? Uh, yeah, a couple of years, but then it gets even better. <laughs> okay. Our daughter is, you know, sitting in our house and living in our house, disrespecting the hell out of our house. And the whole time she's texting him and they're planning their get to get back together story the whole time that she's at our house and somehow this guy finangled away and got orders back to a base here. She went back to him. They moved, she moved out of our house, moved right back in with them and they're still married. Oh yeah. I, I want to be happy for him. I, I, but... I did too, but I was incensed. I was like, I didn't even know what to say. I didn't even put up a fight on that one. I was like, I don't know what more I can tell you yeah. because you haven't listened and you're not going to, like you said. So I just threw my hands up. And the thing is, is that I genuinely 
this may sound like an asshole thing. I'm sorry. But I just didn't like the man on a personal level. I didn't like him. I mean, he, he, I could smell him coming a mile away, you know, and I just got a bad vibe off the guy. And that was really held against me for, for voicing that. I should have never said that, but I did. And uh, that was another big one. So basically, Les doesn't accept oldest daughter's uh, boyfriend. Sarah sees that as something that could potentially ruin the family relations. She'd rather have a single mom as a daughter that loves her than a single mom as a daughter who hates her. That's exactly right. And she had no problem with it. And she made it known to me that they can live here for the rest of their lives if they want, I was told. I was like, do you realize how unhealthy what you just said is? (laughs) You know? That's that's later on down the road, but wow, most unhealthy thing I think I've ever heard. She's so intelligent, and I was like, "You're not that dumb. I know you're not." <laughs> <laughs> okay, so so this I, I'm going to call it this 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 chink in the armor. So you had these, you know, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen years of just this, you know, circle the wagons. It's us against the world. But now all of a sudden, the world has found its way in. Yes. For the next, you know, two, three years at least, you guys, this was the the issue that drove a wedge between you. Tell us, how, how, describe how that looked. I mean, did you did you stay in the same bedroom or was this just we hate each other now? There, there is another component to it that it, uh, she like she had, she has another daughter. Mm-hmm. That's a bigger story. Um, she was, in my opinion, feigning. She was an attention seeking kid. <clears throat> The daughter number two. Daughter number two. And uh, she would do anything for attention. And then she went to the doctor once and they asked her if she'd ever thought about hurting herself. And she said, I've thought about it. Oh, shit. The whole world just came to a screeching halt. And all of a sudden, she's clinically depressed. We've got to do something. And again, I wasn't, I mean, I understand that depression's real. I said, but just being sad is not depression. When my father died, I was very sad. That's not clinical depression. That's an emotion that's going to pass. She didn't want to hear that. So you add that on top of, of the first daughter and that situation. And we didn't agree on two big things. And you mentioned sleeping in the same bed. This is, it's weird. You should say that. I, uh, I hurt my back badly once and I had herniated discs in the bottom or my lower back. I cannot sleep on a flat bed. Couldn't. So after a while, I was forced to sleep on a couch because I had to sleep up against the back of the couch or I couldn't move. If I slept in the bed with her, I couldn't move in the morning. So we actually started sleeping in separate rooms. Yeah. I mean, how far in? uh, Well, this is no, this is after uh, the first chink in the armor is when. Oh, yeah. so you'd been sleeping in the same bed. Oh, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. yeah, yeah. For, for, but then some, all, you know, again, it's like the perfect storm. Right. We've got daughter number one doing stupid shit, back problems, and daughter number two. Thrown in the mix, yes. So you got, and I, I put all three of those together because I, I, I strongly believe that, I, I know some couples make it work fine, but I think usually sleeping in the same bed is an important part of a marriage. Yeah, I would agree with you. And I, and I told her, I said, I, I would gladly sleep here. I said, but you know, I do have to go to work in the morning and I can't move for four hours if I sleep on this bed, you know? And, you know, we talked about buying those $5,000 adjustable beds and, you know, and she's like, that's a car. We can't, do, you know, we can't do that. I agree. Yeah. But so we just kind of amicably came to that call. I, we didn't like it, but then after all the stuff began, Sadly, it was um, easier than it should have been. Yeah. All right. Personal questions. How was the sex life? Off the charts. Fantastic. From beginning to end. That was the the weird thing is that that part of our relationship was top notch and it never feigned. Love to hear that. Even, uh, even wow. during, in the middle of all that shit, it was still the, it was still top notch. I. Really? Yes. Okay. Yeah. So, well, that that's good because you know, so oftentimes you hear, you know, the 
so and so is not in the mood, or so and so is withholding it because she, he, or she is mad. Nope. Usually, she. Um, okay, good. I, I'm glad to hear that. Yeah, that, that's that's actually a good thing. Yeah. All right, so you guys are going along here for a couple of years. Uh, clearly, not happy with each other. Yeah. Clearly, not happy with the situation. You're bringing the daughter home, and she's still texting this abusive husband of hers. Um, at some point, because we're on the my crazy divorce podcast at some point somebody had to say we're done yeah um, let's let's hear how that all came about okay well i made it very clear early on that i especially after my son was born i was terrified of divorce just absolutely terrified the the fact of or the idea of not being around my son just terrified me you know i mean i really like literally was scared of divorce and i and i told her that you know and I, I stopped short of saying that she used that as a weapon against me, but she definitely weaponized that word to me because every little confrontation after the big ones, she would dangle divorce over my head all the time. I don't know how, how many times she's like, that's it. You know, I don't think I can do this anymore. And I would get absolutely mortified. And then I would go down and say, okay, you can, you can handle this. You know, you, you can adapt, you can, you can look past these things, you know, with, with the girls and whatnot. And I would, and I'd come back and we'd talk it out and things would be fine. And then we'd inevitably fall back into something and we would do it again. And then one day she, she hit me with it again. And I said, I had had it. I just had enough. I, I was so anxiety riddled at this point and so stressed out. I said, if I keep this up, I'm going to drop dead at 55 at just uh, of stress. I was so stressed mm -hmm. out. I just, I couldn't function. I it was horrible, you know, just knowing that that was looming over me all the time. It, it's a horrible feeling. So during this two and a half, three year time frame, what, uh, you know, how frequently, I mean, you say that she's lo lording it over you, mm -hmm. weaponizing it to a certain extent, mm -hmm. it's once a day, once a month, once a year, what does that mean? Um, I'd no, it wasn't uh, like on a time schedule. It was every disagreement. And I don't mean fight. I mean, disagreement. If I, to, at this point, it got to where she would not admit to any wrongdoing whatsoever. I mean, I could not say you're wrong. It was taken as a, as a, as an insult, as like an attack. And so if I dared to even disagree with her at some point, she's like, I, I, I can't do this. You're not, you're not part of my support system. And when, when you say any disagreement, I mean, I, I want to go to McDonald's for McNuggets and you want to go to Wendy's. I want a divorce. Oh, okay. Is that maybe, the type of disagreement? That, not that minuscule, but if, um, I'm trying to think of a specific, I mean, it was, it was dumb stuff, little stuff, you know, when you start okay. nitpicking, then you start nitpicking. And I, yeah. So you left your socks on the floor. I want yeah, a divorce. Shit like that. A matter of fact, that was one actually, uh, it didn't turn my <laughs> socks inside out. Uh, and she, you know, she's like, you know, I don't like doing laundry like this. And I always told her, then don't do it. I'll do my own laundry. We're a family. And then, and then by the end of that conversation, it was, I can't do this anymore. I just can't handle this anymore. Okay. So it happened often enough. E enough to, yeah, to keep me on my heels. Okay. So for two or three years, <laughs> you got this, all this shit brewing. Yeah. You got kid problems. You're terrified of not of divorce for not seeing your son and everything else and her, I'm sure they're lose financial her consider well sure yeah. yeah and 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 it was mostly external forces which is scary and sad uh so what happened how did how did it finally come crumbling down yeah yeah well like i said we i, I don't even remember the exact i don't even remember what the disagreement or fight was even about to be honest with you it but it was in this particular fight that she just, it, she seemed, she brought up everything. She just brought up everything from like, from the first chink in the armor and, and she was adamant. And I, and I, and I, like I said, I'd had, I'd had enough. And I was like, I had just come to the realization that maybe we're going to have to do this and learn how to make it right or make it work and co-parent our son because we can't, there's no way I can do this for another 20 years. There's no way I'm going to, you know, I'm not going to mm -hmm. make it. So we decided very amicably. I mean, we looked at each other and we we're like, let's, let's just do it ourselves then. Well, and we got divorced. We drew up our own paperwork, downloaded everything, filled it out ourselves, never used one lawyer. And we amicably sat down and, and divided things up. And 
and went into 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 uh, into court and got divorced. That is miraculous. It is unheard and of, to be honest with you. I I split divorcing couples into three groups. First, you've got the unicorns, what you guys just described. Oh, here's a couple that just says, you know what? We already know what we want. We've figured everything out. All we need are some forms. Yeah. Then at the other end of the spectrum, which are the stories that usually end up on this show, uh, are what I call the lions and hyenas, where they're going to fight because that's just part of their instinct. Now, unfortunately, it only takes one of the two to create that type of a divorce. Uh, they don't both have to be assholes. No. And, but, and so, but anyway, so the lions and hyenas are at the other end of the spectrum. Then there's most of the people in the middle uh, where it's, they need a little bit more handholding than just filling out forms, but they certainly don't need to go all the way to having attorneys involved. Right. Yeah. That's where our divorce.com comes in, by the way, oh, um, okay. just to put a plug in for our sponsor. Right on. Um, and then I think most couples, if they can work together just one last time and one of them or both of them avoid getting greedy or, you know, doing dirty tricks or trying to hide anything from the other one, if you guys can just sit down and walk through it, then you can have the type of divorce that you and Sarah did. And also I have to, I mean, I have to give credit where credit's due, especially to her. <laughs> and it's, it's actually funny is that it, what, what, what happened in the gallery, the, the courtroom was full. It was a lot of things going on that day. And, you know, the judge is actually commending us for being so civil and being, you know, so nice about it and deciding to co-parent your child and whatnot. We were very, we were amazingly calm with one another, you know, through the whole thing. And, and this is what she asked for no child support because she knows she knew, she knew that I love my son and I would do anything. She knew without even, without, without having to have court documents that I would take care of that boy if, if I needed to, you know, and I, and I have given her every, and I remember when the judge said, so we're setting child support at zero. And I heard a guy behind me pull a deep breath. He went, Oh, like a dude's like, are you shitting me? You lucky bastard. You know, but it was so bitter sweet, and it's what it's what happened after the divorce is what is where the 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 real pain came in. Well, I'm I'm glad you brought that up because there's a reason you're on this show, yeah. and it's clearly not for that textbook perfect amicable divorce. I, you know, I should so uh, I should have known that it was just not going to be that easy. You know. Well, let's hear it. What happened? Well, it's not, it's not any, well, it is something she did, but we, um, almost immediately after our divorce, I bought a house, she bought a house, different towns. Um, but in, we instantly, we, we promised each other that we would help each other. We didn't, we literally had nobody down here. I was like, my son is my, literally my only family now, you know? And, and so we said, well, we'll help each other out with, construction project. We're both big DIY people. We remodeled our house. So, so we got to this point where we're helping each other out with our house. Well, we start dating, literally start dating all over again. It's just like at the beginning and it, it was the best it has ever been. We never got along better. And I was just blown away. I, and yeah. <laughs> and I personally was falling back in love with her again. And I thought, we're going to, we're, this may take a while. I said, but we're going to, we're going to reconcile this somehow. I had, it, I was convinced of it. I'm like, we're going to, we're going to get back together. And it stayed that way for a year. We did this and it was absolute bliss. It was like when we first started dating, it was unreal. And I was blown away. I was so, but I, I, I mean, I blame myself because I, I should know, you're not going to, you're not going to be a man, have your own house and see your ex-wife every now and again and have a good time. And all that. That's not, that, that is something you're going to have to pay somehow. <laughs> okay. So, so let's talk about that for a second. Okay. So you're, you're divorced. Yeah. You, you almost immediately start dating again. Yeah. About a month after we got divorced. And, and by dating, I mean, were, were you like, you know, taking her to a movie? What do you yeah. mean by dating? Were dating you going and having sex somewhere? That. We, that was a lot of that going on, but we would go out on dates. I mean, like a dating. You really couple, dated. Literally go out to eat, go out to movies. I mean, we were dating like you would. Date Good for you. Yeah. That's what I thought. Good for, you know, it's like, we're going to, 
good for us, I thought. I was like, you know, we're going to be one of the rare people. Did you know you can get divorced without hiring an attorney? Let OurDivorce.com guide you through our three-step process for a simple flat fee. Visit OurDivorce.com to learn more and get started today. What were you thinking about her daughters, though, at this point? I wasn't. Um, the one was gone. The one was, you know, was married and married was having, doing her own thing. So she was out of the house. But the other one was still living with her. And I foolishly, I just kind of put it out of my head. I didn't think about it. But I, I, I knew rock. that that was going to have to come into play someday. I knew it was coming, you know, but I was like, I'm just I'm happy. So I'm not going to I'm not going to ruin this for me. I'm not going to ruin my happiness. Very mm-hmm. foolish thing to do, by the way. I mean, that way I was thinking. I put that all on my own shoulders. Very foolish way of thinking that you can just sweep all this shit to the side and it'll kind of go away. Yeah. Very dumb on my part. Uh, Do you remember, um, what was that lady's name? She was a syndicated, uh, Laura Schlesinger. Dr. Laura Schlesinger. That's right. I remember I listened to her show one time and some girl, some lady had called in. She said, you know, my husband and I are having problems. And she said, well, tell me about before you got married. And she went on and told all these glaring red flags. Um, I mean, her, 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 her now husband was cheating before they got married and she knew about it. And, and Dr. Laura said, well, what did you think was going to happen? You've got this bull with these very sharp horns and he's not afraid to use them. Did you think that the minute you got married, those horns were just going to fall off? Exactly. Yeah. And that sounds like what, what, you know, you're in this in a little kind of a different situation where you, you knew about these red flags, you knew that they had caused this divorce yeah. and yet you were actively ignoring them, <laughs> actively, proactively yeah, yeah. <laughs> putting them out of your mind. Yeah. Well, way to go, Les. Well, okay. So then what happened? Well, yeah. Good move, Les. <laughs> <laughs> way, way, to, way to keep it on the rails there, kid. Um, no, uh, it's strange because you're right. Everything, I mean, and I knew it's the weird, like I said before, I was falling back in love with her again. And to tell yourself you're not in love and to know that I got to back away, you sent, I could not do it. I could not mm-hmm. say I'm in love with you, but I can't see you anymore. I couldn't do that. I just, my brain would not let it happen. And, um, uh, and I was content on going on like that until I figured, you know, at some point I was going to say, look, let's just, let's just get back together. Let's, you know, let's end this shit. We'll, we'll rent one of our houses out. We'll make a mint. It'll be better. It'll be awesome. You know, that was my plan. And one day she came over. And she said, uh, she came over on Saturday mornings. We'd go shopping, food shopping. It was like a ritual. That's what we did. Sure. She came over just like normal and came up and er- the stairs and everything. And she just told me, she's like, um, I can't do this anymore. And I, I was like, do what? Like go shopping? You know, she's like, no, I, I, I can't do this anymore. She goes, I need to, I hate this phrase. I hate move on. But she's like, I got to, she's like, I got, I got to move on. I got to, I got to see what else is going on out there. She goes, what are we going to do? Are we going to get married again? I was like, well, I kind of thought we would. She goes, I don't want that. She's like, and I don't want to be with you anymore. Wow. That's where the fucking knife went in, into the chest. Cause I was full blown in love again and thinking the best. And I just got the, I got my legs cut off from under me. I mean, now granted I have to, again, she wasn't doing anything wrong. We were, had been divorced for a year. She never cheated on me. I never cheated on her. We had no, nothing bad like that had ever happened. But when I hear move on, I know what that means. That means I need to go out and see about maybe somebody else. That's what that move, that's what move on means to me. Mm -hmm. And I think it was two weeks later, I found out that she had started dating some guy and I don't think I've ever felt pain like that in my life. When did that happen? 
What year? I mean, oh, this this ago? has been about not even a year ago. I mean, oh yeah, so still very fresh. Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, I, I'm doing I'm much better. I, logic and some time has gone by, you know, and I started to accept it. But that first couple months was anybody out there that I mean, most of your audience knows what. They know exactly what I'm talking about. That is an unbearable pain that never ends. Yeah. I've, I've used this phrase so many times on this show, and it, it really has helped me, and that is that shit like this never hurts any less. It just hurts less often. Oh, there you go. There you because, go. Because, uh, you know, when something like that happens, you you know, it, it's all consuming, right? You it, it's, 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 you're, it's not unrelenting pain. Yeah, but then one day you wake up and you, you you don't even think about it until you've been awake for half an hour. And then you go, oh, yeah, this is my shitty life right exactly. now. Exactly. And then a few weeks later, it's it's hours. And then it's you might even go an entire day. Yep. Exactly. Uh, but then the pain hits you. And then every once in a while, it hits you. I mean, I, I, I told you that I, um, you know, I was in that stupid relationship after my divorce i mean looking back it was a stupid relationship sure um at the time i thought it was great uh as did i but she she dumped me very abruptly and (laughs) forcefully and just yesterday i mean it's been it's been almost a year but just yesterday um I, I was watching a TV show, which I've been meaning to watch for years. Shit's Creek. If you Love it. Watch it. Oh my gosh. It's One the funniest favorites. show I've ever seen. <laughs> and I just was watching it last night and I thought, Oh, I, I want to call her and tell her she needs to watch this. Oh wow. And, and I, and, and it's not that I obsess about her, but I'm like, going, I, she would love this show. Wow. And, it's funny and you would think of her. Well, um, uh finding yeah. a new show that's that's yeah that doesn't happen and that was weird for me uh because you know i don't think about her that often right i mean every once in a while you know just like i said it hurts less often yeah I, and, you know and like i said i've i've had like i've experienced massive heartbreak one time before with a girlfriend so i know i knew the feeling and i knew it was going to you know when i, I recognized it immediately and i also knew in the back of my head that it will go away but yeah. it, I knew that, but that's like telling somebody to not have a panic attack, you know, <laughs> <laughs> it's just, I wanted it to go away instantaneously and it was not happening. And it was you know, right. And you know, months go by and, and I actually had to, I had to leave town. I had to get away because I was afraid I was going to have like a breakdown at work and I didn't need that going on. I didn't want, you know, coworkers and bosses seeing me fall down on the floor because I, I have no shame in admitting that I, I, you know, just laid around crying like a baby. Of course, you know, that's what you do, you know? And, and I begged her, I literally begged her to come back. And, you know, I'm not, I know I'm not the first nor I would be the last guy to do that. But nope. at the time I was, I would have done anything to make that pain stop. I'd have done anything she wanted. Yeah. And, and and anyone listening right now, if you think that that's inappropriate, you've never been there. That's right. I told it to my brother because my brother's like, just stop it. I was like, do you know how goddamn easy that is to say? Yeah. I said, you've never been here, man. You don't know what this feels like. Yeah. Yeah. Walk a mile in my shoes before you make that. That's right. I, I, and I, I hate, I mean, I really detest blanket statements like that, that people just kind of, you know, randomly, they have them chambered. Like I went, you know, my, I have a therapist. He's just full of chambered responses, you know? And, and, you know, of course he immediately wanted to put, you're depressed. And I'm like, I'm not depressed. I'm sad, man. And I'm not taking pills, you know, I'm not going to go down that road. So, and, and it's, we went to therapy and I, I, I even suggested, like, let's go back to therapy. She's like, it didn't work the first two times. Why would we go back? She was done. And what I, and I couldn't get that through my head. She was out. She had already made her mind up. And yep. she's a, a woman that she thinks things through. She's very intelligent. And so it only, only after time did I realized that she probably had been mulling, had, turning this over for a couple of weeks before she told me. So she was with another guy 
two weeks after she broke it off with you, to your knowledge, that happened in those two weeks or did it start before she told you? You know, I will have, again, I have to give her credit and based on her past activity, I don't believe that that was going on because she just, she wasn't, she was a, a big believer in one person with one person and she would not, and she even, I mean, she says, I don't want to be with you, but I have respect for you. I would not, I'm not going to do that to you. Now I know people have said that and done different before, but I don't believe that she did. I believe that she may have been talking to him and they may have been cultivating, you know, maybe something, but she was going to break it off with me before she went over to him. The same way she did when we met, she made sure she broke it off with this guy and then she approached me. So Got it. I have to give her the benefit of the doubt and say that nah, she, she probably did the right thing. That's, that's good to know. Yeah. So your, um, relationship with your stepkids, does it exist? Non-existent. I was told. Did it exist during that year that you were dating? Yeah. Especially with the oldest one, the oldest one and I kind of came to terms and we actually got along very well. I mean, we would, we talked and text all the time. We, we liked the same movies and I took her, she was a metal head like me. I took her to con- nice. I took her a cannibal corpse concert and I was like, this, this girl's great. Wow. Yeah. And I was like, this kid, <laughs> I, I like this kid. And we, as she became an adult, you know, barring that initial couple of year period where I wasn't, you know, I did not agree with what she was doing. She became a very responsible woman. You know, and she mm-hmm. went on to get a very good job and she's a very good mother and the, her kids, she has two ch- children now and they call, I was their grandfather, you know, and I loved them. I love, well, the one, I, the one I didn't get to meet too much, but the other, the, the first one, he loved me and I loved him back and it was yanked out from under me. Mm-hmm. I haven't seen him since. I am not innocent in all this. I played my own part. You know, I mean, I did, I was, I was reacting though. I, I will say that my Anything that I have done, like I'll admit, I I took to drinking, which is another stupid f- fucking thing to do. I'm sorry to be crass, but it's it's the dumbest goddamn move you can make is to try to is to sit in the basement and drink your problems away. And I'll and I told her I said I'll never blame you for putting a bottle to my lips. I said, but you definitely inspired it. By the way, I'm going to agree with you. That is a dumb thing to do. But I guess my question for you: you seem really opposed to taking a pill yeah i am um is that because of your mother that and uh when i had my back issues i had a doctor who threw pain meds out like they were m&ms and and i and and i mean i was literally in agonizing pain and i had to take these things well what happens if you when you take pain pills for two years exactly your body Mm -hmm. to starts to depend on them. And when I, I was like, I don't want to take these anymore. They're, you know, they're making me feel bad. And I stopped taking them and holy sheep shit, you know, full, almost like, I guess you'd call that withdrawal, you know? Yeah. And, and I went to my, I went to her and I said, I think I'm in drug withdrawal. I, I think this is what this is. And we went to the doctor and I told him, I was like, I, we have to find a different way. I can't take these anymore. And uh, she was on board with it. So I'm, I'm really not a big fan of any kind of addictive medicine. If I can avoid it, I do avoid it. And yes, my mother, I watched her take pills ever since I was four or five years old. Earliest memory, she's popped a pill constantly. I think it's just interesting. And again, this is not a blame statement or anything. It's just interesting that you're adamantly opposed to pills, but started drinking. Yeah. Self-medication, same. Same difference. Same difference, right. just a different delivery me- right. mechanism. I will never say that that's it, one is better than the other. It's not. They're both. I mean, if anything, alcohol is m- far more dangerous. Yeah, yeah. Well, it's just it's just so readily accessible. Right. I think so. Right. Well, what about your relationship with your son? Rock solid, and I couldn't yeah, be happier. Rock solid. We really made an effort, and I'll have to again. I have to give her credit. It. it because she knows what I feel about that boy. She knows how, I mean, in love I am with my son. And she doesn't use that as a weapon against me. She, Good. she, we agreed that he's old enough that she's like, well, let's just let him decide where he wants to go and when he wants to go there. I said, I couldn't agree more. 
I said, he needs you as much as he needs. I know he needs his mother. You know, kids need their mother and they need their father. Mm -hmm. And, and she, we are completely in sync when it comes to him. It's, it's really weird because I mean, we have really done a good job not letting him get affected by that. I know that he knows what's going on, of course. Sure. But we've done a real good job at not letting it too negatively affect him, in my opinion. And and your relationship with Sarah now, clearly you talk. Uh, are you friendly? That's that's another that's another weird one is that um, when I found out she was dating somebody else, it was hard for me to, to even hear her talk. You know, as you can imagine, it's it was hard to see her because that I mean, I don't know, maybe it's that reptilian brain. Because all I could see when I saw her, when I would take James and um, James home, is all I could see was her with another man. I mean, that's all I could envision. And every time I pulled up to her house, it was just nothing but this flood of anxiety. And I got to where I could not. I, I, I was like, "Can can you come and pick him up, please?" And like, not knock on the door. You know, I had trouble seeing her because I was just so uh-huh. hurt, and and I wanted her back so badly. And, and it wasn't going to happen. And I was like, you need to get used to this, dude. This, you know, we got years ahead of us. So it's time to, you know, shit it off the pot and get, 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 your, get your head straight. Again, easier, easier said than done. And yeah. I, I went from sadness to resentment real quick. And uh, I was not nice. And uh, I wasn't nice to her. And I said a lot of horrible, horrible things to her that I regret because she technically did nothing wrong. You know, we were divorced. She simply dated somebody else after her divorce. So I couldn't get, I couldn't point at her and go look at the bad person. She wasn't. And that hurt even worse because I wanted to make her the bad person. Right. You you were frustrated to not like her and I couldn't come up with one and it made it hurt even worse. So actually just last week, last week, I was sending a text to a friend and I was being very unkind to my ex-wife in this text and I sent it to her instead and it was awful and it was never meant it was never intended for her But in my text thread, they were right next to each other. And I just, I was flipping around. I just accidentally hit her. And I I was like, oh no, oh shit, nothing for three days. And I was like, well, here's where the lawyer comes in. Here's where everything's going to get thrown up in the air and I'm done. And that's it. Yeah. Exact opposite. She calls me and she says, we need to talk. Can we talk? Very calm. And I, I was like, this is, this is too easy. I'm waiting. I was like, she's got a gun or something in the car, <laughs> you know, right. like, this is too easy. And we met and she's like, this is, we, we can't, we can't keep doing this, man. She's like, you know, our son, she's like, we, we have an obligation. And, and, and I explained to her, I said, that text was never meant for you to see. I, I, and I apologized to me. I was like, I'm sorry what I said. I said, but yeah, I understand it wasn't meant for you. And I, we were both very I was talking to one of the guys in, the, in the, another divorce kind of support group kind of thing. And we were just basically we're pissed off and we're, we're bashing them, you know, mm-hmm. just trying to relieve some of that stress. And, and so, but I agreed with her and we had like a, a 45 minute hour long talk that was completely calm. And we decided to put the swords away for good. And we actually gave each other a big hug and she's like, you can call me my nickname again if you want. And I was like, here we go. This is good. This is a good thing. Yeah, I was still, I mean, I'm not going to lie. There's still a little, uh, you know, in the chest. Sure. But I was like, this is unheard of for her to completely just draw a line and go, look, let's do this and mean it. And I agreed. And we have been fine ever since. And you probably feel much better. I do. I'm just, like I said, I still... I'm still getting through shit. You know, I'm still working through it. I still, but you're right. I don't think about her and until whenever, but you know, when that, when that thought hits you, you know how it is. It just hits you and then it's there and that's going away though. But, uh, 
I can't take anything away from it. I was like, it's very adult of you because I don't know that I would have done that. So you got to hand it to her, you know? I don't envy you. I mean, you're, you're still, I mean, this, this shit happened last week. Yeah. Literally. So you're, you're, you're still in the thick of things. Yeah. And, uh, we talk about earlier how Sarah's never been alone. Uh, is she with that guy, by the way? Yes. And we had a conversation about that. I was like, have you ever considered, I, I said, you've never been alone. She goes, I have no problem with being alone. I said, how do you know you've never been alone? You don't know that you don't have a problem with being alone. I said, I think you have a huge problem with being alone because a 20 year relationship and, and then a year of dating the same man. And in two weeks you're into another one. I said, that's, uh-huh. I said, I wasn't mad or, or, or screaming. I said, that I, that's, that's unhealthy. I said, I think you're love bombing the shit out of him for one. And I think you're just trying to avoid healing. But again, I'm no doctor. I'm no therapist. That's just my own personal opinion. I knew I'd yeah. be no good for anybody right now or, you know, in, in a dating scene or, you know, in a serious dating scene. You know, so it's interesting because uh, I, I came to the realization about myself just last year when that girlfriend I mentioned earlier, when she dumped me. Um, so I, so, so give you the quick history. I obviously born, uh, lived with my parents until I went on my Mormon mission, you know, with the oh, name yeah. tags and the bike oh, and everything. Right. Um, and you're never alone as a missionary. You always have your missionary companion with you. And so two years together, then I went home, lived with my parents until the day I got married when I was 24 years old and lived with my first wife uh, until we separated and I moved into my brother's basement. And then um, I moved into my own apartment for the first time in my life. I was living alone. And that's when I connected with my second wife. And so we were, I was alone for a grand total of like, you know, two or three months really. Oh, wow. And, and then when my first divorce was finalized, I got married right away. 19 days. Um, yeah. I mean, it took 19 months to get the divorce finalized. Oh. So, I mean, it wasn't like, it was nasty you know, then. <laughs> yeah. Oh, it was awful. Yeah. But the, the, I mean, the fact is though, I got married way too fast. And so we moved in together and, um, but we'd been together for most of that sure. 19 months. Well, and then we got divorced and then, I, I lived alone in our marital home for a couple of months while it sold and closed. And then I moved right in with my three oldest sons. Wow. And I stayed with them till I moved in with my girlfriend <laughs> until she bump, dumped me. And I moved here to Florida. Literally these last, what, seven months now. This is the first time I've ever lived alone. Do you, I'm 54 years old. Wow. Do you think, all right. And I have to ask you then, do you think that that was, that it's, that you're better off? Is it healthy to sit by yourself yes. and figure things out? Yes. I don't know if it's necessarily healthy to sit and figure them out. It's healthy to know that you can be alone. There you go. There you go. And cause I, I did a TikTok about this a few weeks ago where I, I had, when I first got divorced, I started dating like in an obsessive way. And I didn't wait, by the way. I was dating literally the day she left. I mean, literally. I went on a date the night that she left me. That's a fast mover I, right there. <laughs> yeah. And then there's a story behind it I won't bore you with. But the bottom line is I, wait, I dated way too fast and I dated way too much. And it, looking back, you know, hindsight's twenty twenty. I can now look back and say, I wasn't looking for a partner. I was looking for a security blanket because I had never been alone. I can see that. And now here I am. I prefer having a partner. I, I'm not going to lie about that. Everybody I don't, would, I, think. I don't relish being alone, right. but I don't mind it. Right. I'm, I enjoy my time Yeah. and I, no one's telling me what to do or anything like that. So, Again, I'm not sitting here advocating everybody needs to stay single. I'm just saying I, I put out a, a TikTok again. Everything we do is on TikTok, right? Right on. I, I said um, the best advice I never took, okay, right after I got divorced, very good friend of mine named Chris, um, 
well, <laughs> a bunch of others too, several friends. But I remember Chris and I sat down at this restaurant called the Fiddler's Elbow. I'll never forget. He looked at me and he says, whatever you do, don't go on a date for at least a year. I had the same advice. And I said, that's the dumbest thing. You guys don't know who I am. I'm sitting by I myself for a year. Get the hell out of here. <laughs> and, and not only that, but I mean, you know, she, well, anyway, for whatever reason, I said no. And I dated up a storm. And again, hindsight's twenty twenty. That is advice I should have taken. Absolutely. And so thinking of advice, Les, yeah. you've been through a crazy situation. Your divorce itself wasn't wasn't bad at all no. probably a pain in the ass but not a bad divorce not at all but the 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 emotions the breakups the everything that led up to it and that have happened since yeah. you've been through the ringer yeah it's been a tough few years for you so yes. what advice would you want to share with anyone listening today i think that i've thought about this and um I, i've thought back what would i do if i could go back and do it again. And it's, we've, we've already gone over it is you've got, if you get, if a flag goes up in your head and you, you know, something isn't right. I mean, it, whether you're in love or not, you got to pay attention to those signals because you are, you're so willing to overlook glaring things that will be problems in the future. I mean, and I was, I, I'm saying I was right. I ignored shit that became problem problematic. And it's, and I ignored it all. That's the best advice I give is like, listen to yourself. I mean, cause your brain will in, in the beginning of a relationship, your brain will be your friend, but when you break up, your brain's not your friend, <laughs> you know, your brain's going to make you the best things and all that shit. But I, that's the best advice I give is, is listen and watch for those flags, man. You know, if someone's not good for you, you can, you do, whether we want to admit it or not, you know, and whether you're in love or not, you know, if someone's not right. That's great advice. That's really great advice. And I hope people will listen. I do. I, I don't want anybody to feel this man or woman, you know, I just, like I said, I'm coming out of it, but when I, you know, the support group, or I mean, it's not an official, but you know who I'm talking about. I do. And they've, uh, they've, people have reached out to me because that man that, that our mutual acquaintance suggested I get on TikTok as a ther as a therapeutic thing. And it turned out to be one of the best ideas I ever had in my life because I just started making videos. And after I got done with the weepy, oh my God, I'm so, so I'm so sad shit. Then I started getting into the fun stuff and, and it's been very cathartic, you know? So yeah. he was right. And, but he also, it's like we're his minions. And when someone reaches out to us, like we all just descend on them and we're like, you're not alone. You're going to be all right. Just last night, uh, a guy re reached out to me for some reason and he's in the, he's at the beginning of it. And he was obviously devastated and in pain, you know? And I, and I called our friend and within, I mean, it's like a swarm of locusts for him, went around this guy. And I, I just love it because like, you know, yeah, it, it, it they, he did the same thing for me. I made a comment yeah. on one of his videos and he really talked to me. I mean, not literally, but he talked me off a cliff, you know, he talked me down. And he made yeah. things a lot easier to deal with. So that's the second piece of advice no. that you didn't really say, but I'm going to sum it all up. Just know you're not alone. That is there are, there are a lot of us out here that have been through yep. some pretty shitty stuff. Yes. And I think I can speak for less and for myself. If you guys are men or women, if you're feeling it, talk to somebody, yes. talk to us. Yes. We're not therapists, but, uh, we're, we're, I think we're, we like to help people. We're experienced, man. Let's just give it that. We know what we're, yeah. we may have a degree. I don't have a degree, but I know what I'm talking about. Yeah. You know, wisdom is better. Well, Les, thank you so much for being here. This is a great story. It's a sad story, but it's a great story and it's a cautionary tale. And I truly appreciate your willingness to share. Oh, absolutely, man. I, I've believe it or not. Again, I know in a minute, this is going to seem like, a therapeutic experience, just belching it all out like this, you know, and, uh, it's, I've loved doing it. It's, it's, it's been cool. I like it. I like telling the story. Wow. As every guest has done before him, Les really came through with some great advice. I mean, pay attention to your own brain. 
We all see the red flags, so we just need to stop ignoring them. Simple, right? And like Les said, you're not alone. If you've reached the end of your rope, rely on your family and friends for support. And if that doesn't work, reach out to me. I'm happy to help in any way I can. All right, that's it for now. Be sure to take a minute right now to give us a five-star rating on whatever app you're using to listen to us. Have an amazing week, everyone. Bye. Divorce doesn't have to be complicated. Our Divorce.com's three-step procedure provides a simple and affordable process that you can follow at your own pace. Save thousands by visiting OurDivorce.com today.